Hoy en UFC Conectado, el mexicoamericano Adrián Yanes ve hacia el futuro después de perder a sus dos mentores. I've had things happen to me that a lot of fighters would have just quit. I didn't. Cole Swanson reflexiona sobre su pelea del Salón de la Fama contra Yu Ho Choi. Those last 30 seconds, I was giving it everything I had. I just remember realizing at that moment that this is one of those fights that you're going to remember forever. Y Joe Lawson nos revela sus cinco peleas favoritas en la UFC. It's crazy that I've had this many fights in the UFC. One of the most accomplished UFC fighters here is Joe Lawson. Hola y bienvenidos a UFC Conectado. Adrián Llanes creció en el mundo de los combates, primero bajo la tutela de su padre Andrés y luego como estudiante del entrenador Saúl Solís. La tragedia amenazó con desviar su carrera después de perder a sus dos figuras paternas. Sin embargo, Llanes se comprometió a honrar el legado de ambos con su éxito en el octágono y está determinado a pagar el favor entrenando a nuevas generaciones de peleadores. Hoy veremos la historia de Llanes en esta edición de Enfoque. Early years of my life, I just remember a lot of being outside. Play with my friends, I was very, very active at home. My dad would just find a way, or my mom would just find a way just to keep us busy doing something. My dad, he was a really good boxer, won amateur titles and everything. And the way I would get closer with my dad was uh, watching the fights. We would order the fights, and my dad would be super like in with the fights. Like a good fight happens, and my dad would grab me, like, "Yeah, you see that? Like, yeah, yeah." Like I'm just like, "Yeah," like I was like, "I'm getting, I'm getting affection." <laughs> But uh, as I'm watching it, I'm seeing like just the art and the beauty of like these guys just going at it, and I'm like falling in love with it while also trying to get closer with my dad. Whenever I was 15 years old, I started training in MMA, and I remember talking to my dad, saying like, "I need to get better, better punches, better hands." And that's when my dad was like, "All right, started searching around, and we see Metro Fight Club." Next thing you know, we're there on a Saturday. We walk in, Coach Saul is doing a private session, and you just see the amount of pictures that he had. He had pictures with Tito Ortiz, Carlo Prater on there, Melvin Gillard, Eve Edwards, all of that. I'm just like, oh, like wide-eyed, just being like, how did I not know about this? And after the first couple of days of me training, I knew I wanted to fight. I already knew martial arts was going to be in my life somehow for the rest of my life. Just the aura that my coach Saul had, him and my dad, like, ended up being like good friends. We'd be watching UFC fights, and I'd be so enthralled. My dad'd be the one telling me, "He's like, you can be there. You're gonna do this. Like, I know you can. You can absolutely do it." And I'd always just kind of just tell my dad, "Like, yeah, you're crazy, dad. <laughs> yeah, you're crazy, dad." I thought the man was crazy, but then I went undefeated as an amateur and had my first pro fight. And starting to look up, I was like, maybe the UFC is a possibility. Yeah, maybe. I like, I can try this. During that time, kind of started noticing that my dad was starting to lose weight, and then uh, they start running tests, just trying to see what's wrong. Uh, and then on my birthday, find out that you know he got stomach cancer. You know, it was stage four. You know, so. They started chemo right after. He stayed strong for as long as he could, but my dad passed away. Years later, I learned I was going to be on the Contender Series. The one who broke the news to me was my coach Saul. That conversation that we had, I was like, "You, I was like, you and my dad told me I could get here. Like, you and my dad." And I was like, "Got it. Like, this is my chance." This is my chance. Adrian Yanez's dad, Andy, was his world. Tonight, he chases this dream of a UFC contract. His father was a boxer, wanted to follow in his footsteps, but fell in love with MMA. I remember about to step into the cage and just being like, oh, like, this is it. Fight. Yanez, his boxing style, very crisp hands. Whoa! Oh! 
He's stuck him and he's out. That's it. After the ref stopped it, I just remember just being like shocked. Like it was taking me a second just to like take everything in. Adrian Yanez, quick work of Brady Huang. My coach, he was so proud. I just started smiling. Dad, I did it. I fall flat on the canvas, laying there, and I'm just looking at the ceiling. And I'm like, like, holy shit. Dad, I did it. And like going back to whenever my dad was watching boxing, I see how proud he was of like his fighter if he did good. That moment, I was happy, I was joyful. Proving my dad right. So and then I got my contract and I immediately was like, I have to go to my dad. My way of sharing it with him was I went to his gravesite and uh, was showing the tombstone, the papers. I signed it then and there. I was ready for like the biggest stage of my career. Adrian Yanez out of Texas is back in Las Vegas and hoping to break in that UFC contract with a big win tonight. Combos, Adrian, combos. That's a good buy and another. He's hurt. Oh, head kick. Holy smokes. Adrian Yanez. Let's go. They'll tell you, the sky's the limit for this guy. He has a tremendous coach in Sol Solis. Let the hands go. Oh, that's gonna do it! Wow! Adrian Yanez, Mr. Knockout, does it again! I'm telling you, we have a future contender on our hands. It's also Lise, he deserves all the credit, man. If, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be in this position I am today. So big credit to my coach, Sauce Lise. My third fight in the UFC. I just remember, so I was like, I'm so sorry, I apologize. He had contracted COVID, so he wasn't able to be in my corner for that fight. I was like, yeah, we'll be fine. We're going to be good. Right away, these guys are going after it. Oh! Randy started off very fast. Oh! I didn't expect that from him. All Costa early on. Look at Costa in his face. Stiff jab for Costa and another. Man. Walking back to that corner, I was like, I'm better than this. Keep your hands a little bit more head movement. Touch it. You're much better than that. Relax, OK? Round two, I just started doing all the things that worked. Everything that Saul had taught me. Nice. There it is, Adrian. Giannis is pressuring heavy, and it's adding up. Oh, body shot. Oh, oh. he heard it back. Here goes Giannis. Oh, he's done. There it is. Wow. How about it? Giannis is the real deal. Immediately right after the fight, I get on a call with him, and he's just like, like yeah, it's like one of the worst things he's ever been through, and all that stuff. And I'm like, I'm just like, <laughs> again, <laughs> like, 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 and I'm just like, nah, coach, you're gonna get through this. You're strong, like you're strong, like yeah, you, you can do this. You got this, like your coach, you got it. I'm just talking to him, and it was a lot of him expressing himself to me how proud he was. At the time, I didn't know that was going to be my last conversation with him. My dad, you know, and saw, like, the two people who told me I could do all this aren't there anymore. I had no time to mourn. At that point in time, like, I had to act because right underneath Saw, it was, it was me. And then it was everybody else. Fly back Sunday, had to be back at the gym that Monday because I had training partners that were fighting three weeks later. And none, I even told all of them, I talked to them, I was like, if any of y'all would want to pull out now, please don't think you have to go and fight. They all decided they still wanted to fight. It immediately turned into, I have to start working with these fighters. I have to start training these guys. One, two, jet. One, two. Step two, jab, one, two, jab. There you go, short, long cross. Again. The one place that we all train at is the place that Saul would be at every single day. It was me sitting where he would sit, coaching where he would coach. Left leg to the fence, keep it nice and tight. Let's just say you pass the head pressure, you use the elbow right here, keeping the wedge in, start working your way up, automatically. 
I'm extremely proud to fill the role. I'm just happy that like I have a good second man in charge and Cameron that helps me be like, hey, we're like, we just gotta keep doing what we're doing. Gracias, big camp. Let's go, one, two. Adrian Yanez, 3-0 since joining the UFC. Three performance of the night bonuses, three knockouts. Stay tight. I had definitely felt like in that last fight, I had to go out there and win. Certainly the toughest test in the career of Adrian Yanez. He has a lot to fight for here tonight. His coach, Saul Salih, has passed away. And he said, you know, I just want to go out there and show him that he was right. Big left from Yanez. There it is. There it is. Did you see the head movement? I mean, At the time, I thought I was doing it for me, but it wasn't really for me. Adrian Yanez extends the win streak. Did you learn something about yourself today? Uh, yeah, I'm always learning something for myself in a fight. Like, uh, especially this one, with, with just how the training camp was and just how emotional this one was, like with everything that went on, man, like it just kind of just solidified that what my coach and what my dad had told me their entire life, like whenever I was with them, they just believed in me and they knew I could do this. I've had things happen to me that a lot of fighters would have just quit. I didn't. It's the story of my career. Like a lot of shit has happened. I might have like lost in different ways, but just never stopped. And I'm gonna keep going, keep going, keep going until I reach the belt. Llegó la hora de hacer una pausa, pero al regreso, Cal Swanson reflexiona sobre su pelea del Salón de la Fama contra Duco Choi. En el UFC 206, el favorito de los fans, Cobb Swanson, se enfrentó a la estrella en ascenso, Du Ho Choi. El combate de peso pluma se convirtió en un clásico instantáneo con 15 intensos minutos de intercambios. La pelea fue nombrada la mejor del 2016 y será inducida al Salón de la Fama este año. Killer Carl Swanson nos lleva de regreso a esa noche memorable en Mi Momento. Cub Swanson and Duho Choi. One of the best fights I've ever seen in my life. My fight against Duho Choi took place December of 2016. I was starting to build some momentum back. I was trying to make my way back for title contention. Swanson, he's won eight of his last 10. And they gave me the offer to fight Choi. Right away, I watched some tape, and I'm like, man, this guy's got a laser right hand. He'd been knocking everyone out. The first round knockouts keep on coming. We have got a star in the making. There was a lot of hype on him, so the fight was intriguing. The Octagon is in Toronto. Fight night, it was pretty wild. It's the biggest crowd I fought in front of, just under 20,000 people. When I'm backstage, it was echoing, and you could hear the crowd was just roaring. I loved it. 31st professional fight for Cub Swanson. And I remember just getting in the zone, getting fired up. I knew I was the underdog, which I felt a little disrespected by. I knew that he was a great opponent and dangerous one, but I just felt like I had the tools and I felt like he wasn't ready for me. But always in the back of your mind, you're like, he better not land one of those shots. You can't get knocked out. My mind was telling me, don't let any of that weakness seep in and stay strong. You know what to do. Handle business. Here we go. Right away, we had a game plan of, let's break him down. He's knocked everyone out in the first round. So let's slow him down, let's get him tired, and then we'll see what happens. I started hearing the, the crowd chanting, Du Ho Choi, and I was a little bit shocked by that because I'm usually a fan favorite. I took that as an opportunity to change their minds. What a flurry back and forth. They are putting on a show. Let's go fight. Round two. 
I realized and my corner realized that he really didn't do well with pressure. Immediately, Cub Swanson assumes the center of the octagon. We wanted to push him back, see how he dealt with it. And I just noticed that he could not handle it. And so I just swarmed him the entire time. And any time that I felt any distance, it made me nervous and I wanted to smother him more. Cuff Swanson's teeing off on this kid. He did catch me with a straight right. Oh, Cuff got hurt! It rocked me for a second. My back hit the fence and I was fine, but I stayed there covering up for a while because I knew that if I opened up to counter punch him, I was gonna get put down. Swanson in trouble! And then finally he got too close. I was able to clinch him and then get a quick takedown. Swanson takes it to the ground! What a fight! When you're in fights like that, the best thing you can do is just stay focused and just keep chipping away at him. Swanson is swinging for the bleachers. When I was hitting him with these big shots, like I was turning my whole body trying to finish him. He kicked him. I knew that I had the gas tank and I just was trying to push, 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 trying to finish him because I just felt like he was so close to being finished. He just was so tough. What a fight. Sellout crowd on their feet. Five minutes remain. Round three was crazy because we wanted to get right back at it. Absolute slugfest. When you have a fight like that, you don't realize how exhausted you are by the third round. I and mean, you don't think three rounds is that hard, but when you push a pace like that, there's no way to train like that. That's what made it a special fight. How good is this? Listen to this crowd go nuts. And with the crowd being so loud, I can barely hear my corner. Circle! Circle! Just the arena was deafening. Display of courage and skill. Those last 30 seconds, I was giving it everything I had. Final seconds of the fight. Cartwheel kick to spinning elbow to punches. He's on top. Landing all those hammer fists. I think most people thought that they stopped it and I won the fight, but didn't realize that the bell had rang because it was so loud. Amazing fight. Absolutely amazing fight. That's a fight of the year, candidate, folks. Well, at the very end of the fight, I just remember realizing at that moment that this is one of those fights that you're going to remember forever. Duo Choi, we never really spoke because he doesn't speak English, but you just kind of get like a weird connection with people like that. I respect him as a warrior and as a person for life. You gave it everything you have. That was a life-changing moment. The winner by unanimous decision, Cobb Swanson. It was an amazing experience. I'm going to remember that forever. Cobb Swanson, ladies and gentlemen. Y hacemos otra pausa, pero al regreso, Joe Lawson nos revela sus cinco peleas favoritas en la UFC. Joe Lawson hizo su debut en la UFC con solo 22 años, noqueando al ex campeón de peso ligero Jens Pulver en menos de un minuto. 16 años después, el oriundo de Boston sigue entreteniendo a los fans con su abrumador estilo y sumisiones. Le pedimos a Joe que nos diera las cinco peleas favoritas de su extensa carrera en Toma 5. Pride of Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Joe Lozon. It's crazy that I've had this many fights in the UFC because we signed like a three fight agreement. We thought that maybe that would be it. Whether it's a submission or it's a knockout, Joe Lozon is an excellent technician. Wow. How good was that? One of the most accomplished UFC fighters coming out of Massachusetts with more than 10 years on the UFC roster. Here is Joe Lozon. It's crazy though how it's, it's all kind of unfolded. Lord is just holding up. I'm Joe Lozon, and these are my top five fights. Coming to number five is Jim Miller, UFC 155. At the time, Jim Miller and I were both on the rise. We were a co-main event that night. 
We're very, very exciting guys to that point. We had a lot of finishes, a lot of exciting fights. We both were willing to throw hands, but we also had great submissions. Wow, he's coming at it again. Oh my God, big shots by Miller. Arm triangle attempt from a standing position. Lozon's in a lot of trouble, he's a bloody mess. He opened a huge cut in my forehead early in the fight, and honestly, things got so slippery. Like, I, I never really understood like how greasy blood was until I'm bleeding all over the place and trying to grapple, and it, just, it was hard. He's got a leg lock. He's too low on it, though. We went the entire 15 minutes, and like there was literally no stop the entire time. Nice knee to the body by Lozon. Miller may be hurt. Good left hand by Lozon. At one point, the referee had to stop to you know, cut gauze or have my hands wrapped. Can you do something about that? Jim and I just sitting there. We're like, we're just talking back and forth. I've had very few fights where I'm actually like, conversing and having a good time with the opponent. No code change. The fight didn't play out exactly how I thought it was going to go. I thought I would be able to submit him, but it was a great fight. Coming in at number four, Michael Chiesa. This was my number four fight because it was pretty close to home. It was in Connecticut. So many friends and family there. Chiesa, he was on the Ultimate Fighter. I thought that you know he had good back control, but I thought I was going to do good otherwise. We really did not want him to get on my back. Able to get Joe Lozon down there. He did get on my back. I escaped and got away. Joe Lozon in the mountain. The crowd responds. Now Lozon's got the back. At one point in the second round, I pulled his hand out of the way. I kneed him in the face and opened a huge cut on his eye. Big knee by Lozon. And the second I saw the cut, I knew the fight was over. It was just a matter of time. The referee stepped in and checked the cut, and I just I raised my hands. Like, while they were checking it out the cut, like, he kept kind of, like, shying away and trying to pull away from the doctor. Doctor waved their hands, no more, no mas, and they stopped the fight, you know? So he did a lot of crying and complaining after the fight. But, you know, it's this the way it goes. He's like, oh, it was a could. I could have kept on going. You want to win a fight, you got to preserve yourself. You got to not get caught. You got to not do this stuff. We bet cheeseburgers on the fight, which he still has not paid. The loser's supposed to buy the winner cheeseburgers. He never delivered on his cheeseburgers. A lot of bad blood here. A lot of bad blood. All in good fun. It was a great finish, great fight. My third favorite fight was my fight against Jens Pulver. So this is my third pick because it was my UFC debut. Coming into my fight with Jens Pulver, he was effectively the reigning champ. I think I probably should have gotten a belt then. I don't know. Because he beat BJ Penn for the, the lightweight title, and then he went away, and then he came back, and this was like his very next fight. The last time we saw him fight in the UFC, he was fighting, defending his title. I didn't really know what I was getting into. I didn't quite understand until I got to California, and I meet everyone, like, oh, who are you fighting? You know, first time, like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm fighting Jens Pulver. And they all start, like, looking down, like, oh, sorry. Like, it was, it was like dead man walking. But the fight went great. We worked a lot on showing takedowns and coming up with punches and throwing punches and shooting takedowns. And I took him down right off the bat. Lozon goes for the shoot. Wow. But then when we got back to our feet, I showed takedown but came up high, and I knocked him on 43 seconds. Down goes Paul Good again. Game, but but Lozon again. got a left hook. Goes Jens. I think the USC owes me a belt somewhere. And I'll know for sure they can ship it to me anytime. Coming in at number two, my fight against Melvin Gillard. My fight against Melvin Gillard was probably the most intimidating fights I ever had. I think it was the only fight my coaches were ever like legitimately scared for my well being because Melvin Gillard had been knocking out everybody way more athletic than me, way stronger than me, way faster than me. Like, how are we gonna beat this guy, right? But I don't think Melvin takes it super serious sometimes. Like, he had, like, a pre-fight party. So like, he weighed in, and I was recovering and trying to get ready for the next day. He went and threw, like, a party at some nightclub or strip club or something like that. I don't think he was taking it super serious. I was just, you know, focused. Wasn't going to let anything deter me. Wasn't going to let him stop me. Scudor, come on. Hit him with a punch, rocked him, which nobody expected. Caught him, Joe caught him, and he's hurt. He's got the back. He's got a hook. He's got throw hooks in. I was surprised that I dropped him in 45 seconds with a punch, but I was not surprised that I choked him. I have great jiu-jitsu, very good submissions. I want to finish people, and the second I got on his back, I knew the fight was over. That's it. It's over. My number one fight in the UFC was against Diego Sanchez. This is UFC 200. It's a huge event. 
I was super excited to fight Diego Sanchez because I remember watching him on the Ultimate Fighter and just, you know, just being an absolute menace on the ground, which is the kind of style I enjoy. I remember we did like a pre-fight press conference thing and like we were both the media scrum and we're there and we're like, we're all buddy-buddy and we're just talking about the fight. We went from that to him like acting like a rabid dog at the weigh-ins, like, you know, breathing and just being a complete maniac. I couldn't keep a straight face. I was laughing because I'm like, is this guy serious right now? Cholo's up, Diego Sanchez. Don't blink in this one. Going in the fight with Diego, he didn't really know what to expect. Sometimes he had great striking, sometimes he came out with aggressive takedowns and had amazing ground and pound. Loads on. Oh, he hurt him. I hit him with a good shot, I rocked him, and I never let him off the hook. From that point on, I just kept pressure, pressure, pressure. I was hitting him with elbows. I remember as I was teeing off, I'm like looking over my shoulder at the referee, like, are you gonna stop this? The ref is telling him, like, oh, defend yourself, defend yourself. He's like, I'm trying. Mel Keith goes flying. Diego trying to do anything to survive. Hit it, it's all over! We stopped Diego Sanchez. We're the only one to stop him with strikes to that point. There were so many great things about the fight with Diego. That, that's why it's my number one. There's just too many things to name and number, but it was a great fight. I'm Joe Lozon, and those are my top five fights in the UFC. Así terminamos este episodio. Contáctanos y comparte tus opiniones en línea usando el hashtag UFC Conectado. Hasta la próxima.